Hello and welcome to the JCN Clinic podcast show. I'm Jessica. And I'm Carissa. Today we are talking about essential fatty acids and why you need to have them in your life, in your diet, and how generally amazing they are. You guys might be like, what the hell is essential fatty acids? We will be breaking that down too. I said to Damien before we started this or earlier today about this as a topic, he's like, I had no idea what the hell you were talking about until you explained. (laughs) (laughs) And I didn't even say EFAs. I just said essential fatty acids. And then he kind of went blank. And then I explained to him. He's like, oh, yeah, that sounds cool. But you might want to explain what EFAs are because I had no idea what the hell you were talking about. (laughs) Yeah. It's actually good. I feel like it's one of those things, isn't it? Like there's so many things that we just – it's such common terminology for us that, yeah, we just – acronym the shit out of it and expect people to know what we're talking about and most people don't no that's right and I think even often as far as topics for the podcast I know Krista and I if you're a long-time listener like often we'll talk and joke about how our topics may be picked at the last minute (laughs) there's certain topics that or just certain areas with nutrition that we'll kind of blase over because to us they're just so well I was going to say mundane they're not mundane (laughs) it's just that they're so every day that we forget that they're actually a really important area to discuss so this one was born out of um, some discussions I've had this week and um, one of them whether she listens to this podcast or not um, it was actually my mum who was staying who and we'll get into this as we go through like to me, we're showing some really strong deficiency signs of essential fatty acids. So we're having some chats around her diet and certain things that she could take and do. And yeah, that, that got me thinking about it alongside my <laughs> looking at my own feet lately and seeing some signs that can be sometimes linked to essential fatty acid deficiency. When I know it's probably not, it's probably the impact on my feet lately, but my nutritionist brain is like, oh my God, I'm not getting enough essential fatty acids. <laughs> Where's the fish oil? Get it down your throat. Cracking and falling off. (laughs) They're not looking too good. They're really gross. You need a pedicure, mate. Oh, it's beyond pedicure. It ain't about just the toenails. Like I've got some serious calluses. Oh, yeah, because they they get – oh, I can't even think about it. They get in there. Oh, really? That's what you need. You need to go and get your feral little disgusting (gasps) feet soaked and you need to get them to get that – thing that's like a filer but actually like a grater grater, cheese grater and carve that shit off your feet that's gross Jess it freaks me out it freaks me (laughs) out there's I just thought of it I have got a blister on the back of my heel that is like a callus but every time I do a long run a, a blister forms under it so imagine a callus with a blister under it and like a few days later, I poke Absolutely it and it's all vile. like fluidy. It's like, blah, 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 and I really want to pop it, but I haven't. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really gross. Um, I have a real, like, a, and it's whatever the opposite is to a fetish. I have that about feet. <laughs> like an absolute repulsion. Repulsion. repulsion for um, feet and feet that aren't like, like exactly what you described is my worst nightmare. You wouldn't even be allowed to walk. You wouldn't be allowed to sleep in my bed if, if those if those feet were near me. It's so weird you say that because I feel like I'm surrounded by the key people in my life who are the same, which gives me almost anxiety about my feet. Like Damien will literally say to me, I love everything about you except your feet. I say that to Mick. I, I literally say that to Mick. <laughs> I'm like, if I could just cut you off at the ankles down, you'd be the perfect man. <laughs> <laughs> so mean, but that's honestly how I feel. It's just this horrible thing that I just, I don't uh, know what it is, but feet with like weird little bent toes and I don't know, like anything like my sister at the moment, I, I, show, I won't say this one online, but she, she is, I reckon, the reason I have such a foot phobia and this thing because her and her girlfriend when they were younger, when we were all younger, I used to have a bit of a thing about feet, but what they would do is grow their toenails long and then tackle me and claw me like rap, a raptor with their toes. <laughs> it's so fucked. And I don't know. <laughs> If that's part of it, I, I have this vivid memory of my grandma on my so on my dad's side telling me like she obviously didn't like feet and saying, 
horrible things about feet, but just saying like, I, there's just nothing pretty about feet. And I remember that sticking with me. Then the torture that my sister and her friend, Jessica, Jessica, (laughs) did to me with their raptor toes is what they used to call. Yeah. Like I just, for me, it's just their vile little things and you best, you best keep them clean and tidy. (laughs) No walking gonna, around barefoot in the clinic when I come up next week. I'm going to force you to go to a foot spa when you're up here next. If you haven't got that fucking shit sorted when you come <laughs> up in two weeks, I am taking you down myself. <laughs> no, I know I need it. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, but anyway, I don't think it's a essential fatty acid deficiency. I think it's a neglect def- <laughs> and a de- neglect issue. <laughs> <laughs> a, f- a foot love deficiency that's probably what it is but anyway as usual we digress so essential fatty acids that's what we're talking about today so what the hell are essential fatty acids and we're going to refer to them as EFAs a lot because it's easier it's and it's Friday and we abbreviate everything so EFAs stand for essential fatty acids um The easiest way to think about this is they are fats, surprise, surprise, but they're fats um, or fatty acids. So they're um, like biochemistry. Um, Actually, I don't think I'll go into the biochemistry too much. It'll bore the hell out of you guys. So basically think about them as fats, but we need to eat these types of fats or consume them for them to play um, important roles in our body. So what I mean by that is that we can't synthesize these fats. So we can't make them within our body. So we have to consume them. Hence why we call them essential fatty acids, um, as opposed to non-essential, uh, we have to be able to take them in and then use them for this myriad of processes that are so fundamental to overall health and well-being because we can't make them internally. So there are two main types of essential fatty acids and some of these you would, I'm sure you guys would have heard of them. So the main one is omega-3 that gets a lot of attention Um, and then there's another one called omega-6 and they're both what we call polyunsaturated fatty acids. Um, We have done some other episodes on fats and you would have heard us refer to saturated fats um, and monounsaturated fats. So today he's talking about these polyunsaturated fatty acids, but particularly these omega-3s and omega-6s. And then I think the only other thing, well, I'll get Chris to add to it in a minute, but the the other thing I think is important for you to know as far as understanding the basics is that when we talk about omega-3, there's different types of fatty acids within omega-3 too. And this becomes important when we start talking about food a little bit down the track because we've got um, alpha-linoleic acid, if I can get the names out properly, which is ALA. Um, We've got EPA and we've got DHA. So when it comes to food and supplements, what we can do is look at types of foods and types of supplements that provide different ratios of these types of omega-3s and then they have different outcomes in the body as well. Um, So I feel like that's a good general summary of essential fatty acids. Very, very basic, but we're going to basic bitch this one because (laughs) the thing about I find with essential fatty acids that I loved when I remember back to studying nutrition and biochemistry, I really love nerding out over the, um, the sort of essential fatty acids as far as their chains that they're made up of and all these insertion points where you get like these different breakdowns and bonds that make it either an omega-3 or omega-6 but that's my brain that's not a lot of other people's brains and you'll probably turn us off if I start talking about that but do you have anything to add Chrissy as far as like what they are anything that I've missed before we get into what they do no I don't think so I think it's like I could just summarize like essential means you have to consume them because we don't make them internally so essential fatty, some type of fat, 
acid, some type of fatty acid that you need to eat. And yeah, and then there's two types basically, your omega threes and your omega sixes. So yeah, and then the types within that. So I think, yeah, I think you nailed it. It's hard to explain though, isn't it? Like when you're trying to, because for us, for us, we see things as like, oh, like that, exactly what you're explaining with what we did in biochem as these intricate little biochemical pathways. So yep. to kind of just really explain it for the sim simplicity that it is, I feel like we struggle over it sometimes. Like it's yeah. just like, how do we just, without boring the living fuck out of everyone listening, make this something simple so you guys can just take something in the way with it. So if you yeah. just take away with that, they're things that you have to consume. Your body doesn't make them the same as there's essential and non-essential amino acids. There's essential and non-essential fats. So yeah. the essential things means they are essential for consumption. You have to find them in your diet and consume them. And then we're going to break them down into what they are. So, or yeah, I think you did really well. Thanks. Couldn't 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10 out of 10, cops. Well done. <laughs> so what do these guys do? I feel like it's almost what do they not do? This is why we wanted to talk do? about them. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about what they don't yeah. do and then assume they do yeah. everything else. Um, mm. Do you want to take the lead and mention a few things about what they do, some of your favourites, and then I can yeah. maybe grab a few others as we go through? Yeah. Do you, Are we going to start, like I'll start with like um, like omega-3s, like the like yeah, true. That sort of space. True, true. Yeah, like because I feel like. It's probably important to understand that you, we have these essential fatty acids. We have omega threes and omega six. It is a it is a balance of ratios in the body, like everything. Um, mm -hmm. And it's probably the easiest way for people listening. And it's not as simple as this, but the easiest way to differentiate is think of your omega threes as anti inflammatory, and think of your omega sixes as pro inflammatory. Mm. But that pro inflammatory statement doesn't mean they're bad. They're necessary yes. for so many functions. It's the same yep. as like when we talk about like our, you know, our interleukin-6 and our inflammatory, you know, pathways in our body, we don't want to be so un so anti-inflammatory that we, you know, we don't have these protective, protective mechanisms in place because we need them for everything that happens mm. in our body from day to day. So when we're talking about the differences between omega-6s and omega-3s, like your omega-6s definitely have a specific role and purpose and it is definitely beneficial, but they are more pro-inflammatory than the omega-3s and mm. it definitely is about a balance. So we definitely want an omega-3 rich diet over an omega-6 rich diet, but it doesn't mean you want to avoid the omega-6 rich foods because of that. So when we're looking at the omega-3s, like probably then we, what Jess was sort of saying before, like you, we break them down to EPA, DHA and ALAs. Um, and we're kind of just from a really broad brushstroke, like if you just say that they're anti-inflammatory, but we can then go in and look at them in terms of, you know, like there's, there's specific parts, say for EPA, which has got some really big, long technical name, which I should have looked up before we did this. In what DHA's EPA itself? Yeah, can you remember what that is? It's like oh, EPA something. It's H like epicopatonic, epic hexa blah blah acid, hexapatonic <laughs> acid, decosa hex hexa. I've got it. Where is it? Hex hexanonic acid. Yeah, they're long. That's yeah, why so everyone calls them EPA DHA, long, and that's why we call them EPA and DHA. So I, I'm happy. I'll break down EPA and DHA. EPA and DHA are both within the omega both within the omega threes. Your EPA is definitely more anti-inflammatory in the sense that it's got these beautiful protective properties, you know, for the cardiovascular system, um, for the gut system, like for, sorry, the gastrointestinal gut system, good language, Carissa, Carissa um, the gastrointestinal system, but um, the musculoskeletal system, but definitely more that anti-inflammatory sort of component as opposed to DHA, which seems to be or is probably more neurologically protective. So mm. it's just how these different acids act and what's like what – probably the easiest way to say, what bodily systems they have an affiliation to protect. So mm -hmm. EPA definitely goes in and I, I like straight away think cardiovascular, I think musculoskeletal, I think gastrointestinal, but DHA I feel like is so heavily and can be so heavily involved in the neurological pathways as well. So that whole nervous system protective. So did you want to break that down more? Because I feel like, or do you feel no, like that's I th easy Well, enough? I think that's, no, I think that highlights the main difference between the two for sure, like EPA as an overall definitely as an anti-inflammatory and how it's used as like a sort of yeah like as part of the inflammatory cascade which again we won't get into the biochemistry of that but it is a critical component 
of the anti-inflammatory or inflammation pathways. Um, and I mean, it, it's so critical um, to mm-hmm. those pathways, which is why it is used heavily as an anti-inflammatory. Um, but yeah, DHEA for sure. I'm the same. I think about it as far as brain health, neurological health. Um, like it's very critical in like the functionality of the brain and, and nerve transmission, even with eye health as well, like mm. really, really important. I think the other thing I think of with um, essential fatty acids is how important they are for the integrity of cell membranes. Um, so yes. when this is probably one of my sort of favorite thing, well, is it, is it a favorite? I don't know <laughs> about them is that I always explain to my clients, like every cell in our body um, should have this beautiful um, fluid membrane, almost like a imagining like a balloon that's like lost a little bit of air and you can kind of push it and poke it like it's nice and kind of malleable. Um, so the that's this phospholipid membrane that it's made out of, which essential fatty acids are an integral part of. So it needs to be this really beautiful fluid membrane that allows things to pass in and out of the membrane of the cell and things coming in and out of a cell is very, very crucial to its functionality, like critical. If things are having trouble getting in and out, we're going to be seeing all sorts of breakdown um, in integrity of the function of the cell. And why, why I like this as something to communicate back to my gross feet <laughs> or my discussion <laughs> yeah. with my mum is that um, she, yeah, her her skin at the moment is so dry, like so, so dry. Mm. Um, and what we need to think about, and you may listeners have heard about people talking about essential fatty acids or or good oils, taking oils for your skin is because our skin, like everything else, is made up of all of these cells and if those cells don't have that nice cellular um, sort of, sorry, fluidy cellular membrane, then they can physically be more rigid and that rigid rigid um, membrane can be quite dry um, externally on the skin and then become quite like flaky. So that was one of the sort of key things that I was talking to my mum about this week was that there was so much like critical dryness on her skin, which again, when we get to dye, it sort of um, made sense. So yeah, I I think about essential fatty acids also as far as like cellular communication. um, And that plays into what you're also saying, Rissy, about even with DHEA and brain and neurological function. So we've got the D, we've got the DHA component of brain health and neurological function, but then also we need our cells and the membranes of those cells and the membranes of those nerves to also be beautifully fluid to exchange messages. So even though we're breaking EPA and DHA apart, which is important because people are like, why am I, why is it more important that you've given me this supplement that's more DHEA versus EPA? Like there'll be a reason we'll do that. Um, But they also are, function together like they both bring important pieces to the party (laughs) so yeah exactly I think for everyone listening like if you're thinking about this from a supplement point of view and something you've taken people who take a standard fish oil um for example usually has a higher ratio of omega like it is an omega-3 rich supplement but then if you flip over and you have a look at the back to the on the nutrition panel it'll actually break down per tablet or per, per two tablets how much epa and how much dha you're actually getting as part of that marine triglyceride um so or and how much of it is marine left is triglyceride or something like that so what if you want to have a look at is in a standard fish oil you're going to get something that is usually typically more epa dense than mm. dha dense and that's purely and that's purely because the standard fish oil most people are taking for inflammatory reasons so mm. anti-inflammatory or to, for anti-inflammatory purposes so if you're someone who gets joint pain um i prescribe i prescribe 
fish oil a lot to my gut health clients because there's some beautiful research coming about out about the effects of EPA on extra LPS production in the gut. So I want that I want that EPA component of the of the omega three to be the dominant part of the fat mm. that I'm prescribing to elicit a certain effect in someone's body. So if I've got someone who's got autoimmune conditions, um, someone who's got like, you know, from a gut-based point of view, from a joint-based point of view, from a cut or something going on with their cardiovascular system, then I really want to hit them with an, with an EPA-rich supplement. But if I've got someone who has got multiple sclerosis, if I've got someone who has got, you know, ADHD, if I've got someone who's like high-functioning autism, so something that is very neurological, I'm going to source them. And I know Jess would be doing exactly the same. But we're going to source a supplement that has a high, higher DHA component because we want the the supplement that we're prescribing to have a, a better impact and an affiliation for nervous system protection as opposed to hexa LPS, you know, regulation mm. in the gut. So it's just understanding the difference between the two and when they're taking a supplement, what they're going to have an affiliation for and look after better in that anti-inflammatory cascade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah, for sure. Perfectly said. I think the other thing too, I was just thinking um, that we didn't mention, which comes back to the DHA and talking about brain health um, is, well, actually two things. One is like mood and um, mm. which I think you just alluded to there, like there's some neurological disorders, but even things like anxiety, depression um, and how beneficial DHA can be there. But the other thing I was thinking about, which we do use a lot at the clinic um, is pregnancy. So DHA in pregnancy. So for people listening who are taking fish oils during pregnancy, you may notice if you look at the back that it has a higher amount of DHA. Actually, depending on what you're taking, it may not. But (laughs) we, we definitely will skew that way because we're looking at the fetal development of the brain for the baby. So through the, through the pregnancy, um, there are, depending on what's going on, um, ideally there's not as much of a concern about inflammation and different inflammatory pathways, whether that be what's going on, you know, hopefully we've got a nice healthy gut. Hopefully we don't have cardiovascular inflammation, a lot of the other things we've talked about, but what we do want is that DHA for the fetal development of the brain. So that's why we like to also lean towards DHA dominance through pregnancy. Um, it was just another one that came up. And I thought also too, um, one of the other ones we haven't mentioned would be hormones, your favorite. Mm. <laughs> like just, yeah. I think about this more like clients over the years who, um, probably just not even eating enough, like people that females in particular who have, whether it's from a disordered eating background or just simply aren't consuming enough food and then the types of diets that they're following where they're just not getting enough of the essential fatty acids coming into their diet and just the benefits there from hormonal health. Um, I guess that's where even there's a bit of the omega-6 side of things, which I loved what you, how you said that earlier. You know, like these different omegas do have roles um, that you play. And you often, you do sometimes see um, omega supplements that are a little bit more hormone based that may include a little bit of omega 6, depending on what we're Mm. after. So there is a role for omega 6 there. But yeah, that's something that we would look at depending on like symptom presentation as well. Mm. I just thought of that one too. Yeah. Um, like I, there's in so many of the like biochem pathways for detox and you know breakdown of you know hormones and stuff like that like essential fatty acids are a um cofactor do you know yeah. what I mean so yeah, it's, yeah yeah like you know so we're talking about using them you know prescriptively but from just an internal point of view for stuff that happens in your body every single day for a healthy functioning person who really yep. doesn't have any ailments or complaint, you still need essential fatty acids because they yep. are cofactors in so many of your biochemical reactions. Yep. Um, and inclu- yeah. And hormones being so big in that space. Yep. So yep. being deficient ain't great. Um, <laughs> exactly. So we like the other thing we probably didn't cover is ALAs and just understanding that just in, in, in the, pathway of how everything works your ALAs are just your plant at least probably the easiest way to say your plant-based sources of 
EPA, really. Yeah. Like, so ALA has the capacity to convert on through to EPA and then the body will use EPA. Um, but it's kind of like you can get straight EPA and DHA from food sources such as, you know, like oily fish. Um, so. <laughs> just face just went blank. <laughs> I told you I was going to be so dumb today and that I shouldn't record a podcast. No, it's pretty We're much, in, you're like questioning yourself. I can see fish, it on your right? face. It is. You're just like, hang on. It's like a- no, it is. Yeah, like, like salmon, mackerel, herring, <laughs> yeah. tuna. Like, do I need to list the fish? <laughs> That's what I'm doing wrong. Oh, no, you're <laughs> seg- you're doing you're great. You're segueing great yeah. into like yeah. what foods do I we realize. eat to get these essential fatty acids? So yeah, exactly. you're right. We've got the. And, uh, <laughs> you go. Yes. Yeah. Like so you're completely you know, the DHA EPA rich foods, which you're right. It's fish. Like it's but it's oily. Yeah, it's it's fish. oily fish. But there's. Chris yeah. just mentioned a few in particular, and you'll see that when you buy fish oils, that they'll often be mm-hmm. um, either from um, so, well, actually, there's a lot of them that you can see, but salmon, tuna, um, cod is um, cod cod liver oil, um, krill mm-hmm. is another one, sardines. Um, we'll get into some of those foods sardines. in a minute, but yeah, it's fish. Unless the other thing, which is relatively new, is the vegan sauce, which is about the algae the micro algae yeah, which is what the algae. fish eat so there is now a space for kind of vegan amigas um, products where they're using the micro algae mm. but that's pretty much it but yeah as mm. you said like ala you have to convert it there's whenever yeah. it's well, I was thinking about what you said earlier about what our, how our brains sort of see things whenever i think about ala epa dha i have this like burnt biochemistry map in my brain I like I can see it and I can see the little arrows that I used to think about that's what I as do far as like what you need to make the conversions and the big thing here is that people like um you can go well why don't I just eat these ALA rich foods which Chris was saying it's like more plant-based which we'll get into a moment they do convert through, but it's not easy. You need the cofactors to do the mm. conversion um, and there isn't the best conversion rates like if you look at it it's not like if you have ala all of that will convert through and give you a beautiful replenished dha epa so there it's it's not a simple process to convert that and if you have other deficiencies that are inhibiting the enzyme pathways to make the conversion then you can run into trouble further which ironically with particularly like vegan diets there can be deficiencies there too. So, yeah, I find that I always remember sort of how fascinating that was as far as like thinking you look at, you can look at a kind of biochemical pathway and go, oh, yeah, well, that converts to that and that converts to that and that converts to that. Like it's so simple. It's like, yeah, it's actually not. Like there can be some it's problems along the way simple, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's I think that's really important what you said too there. Like you can have a beautiful um omega-3 ala or ala rich diet but yep. it doesn't necessarily equate to an epa dha rich diet which yeah. is so you know that's where and that's where consuming like yeah the oily fish or if you are plant-based that algae omega is really really crucial because these these fatty acids are just beyond important they're yeah. essential and necessary for everything um flax seeds like alas yes. since we're on so flax yeah foods seeds, i love hit me with food flax seeds flax seed oil i think they're the two, two that always come to my mind when people are like well what are my plant-based sources i can eat um chia seeds mm-hmm. chia seeds i feel like walnuts um i'm kind of that's me done what's what have you got <laughs> No, you just named you certainly just named to me the like top omega three omega. I see. I just did it then. I just called them omega three, but convert you know the conversion. But yeah, um, yeah, that's the, sort of the top the top three nut wise that I think of nuts and seeds. Um, yeah. Oils, which is controversial, but I would say like plant oils if they are cold pressed, unrefined could also contribute but it's got to be the cream of the crop like you're getting like I'm not talking about like um I don't know I'm trying to think of it like good old canola oil that you buy off the shelf at supermarket so some of the plant some of the plant oils seed oils if they're cold pressed um and 
produce correctly, which is very hard, honestly, to get your hands on. Very controversial at the moment. Um, as far as another topic we could talk about. Oh, we but, should. Yeah, we should. We should. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's sort of the main guys that would stand out that we would be looking at encouraging people to consume in their diet, particularly if they were obviously vegetarian or vegan, it would be including these. But we would also be having a conversation that even though you're consuming these, there's still a higher chance that you're not getting as much EPA, DHA. Mm. How does that work for you? What do we need? Are you open to potentially supplementation? Um, Also including that we have potentially now this kind of like vegan source of EPA, DHA. But Mm. yeah, food-wise, EPA, DHA, I mean, pretty much whether it's, we talked just then about the fish, I think mackerel might be another one. So we talk salmon, tuna, Mm. like honestly, fish in general. But what we, what I always say to my clients is think oily, think (laughs) Think those oily, fatty fish. So salmon and tuna are super common sardines. If you like them, you can't really go out and buy krill as far as I know that easily. Um, Mackerel I find is pretty common to get. Um, Cod, like some types of cod, any others of, that come to mind for you as far as fatty fish that's herring, common for us? Is, herring, oh, herring is probably something that, you know, you Reminds can get me of faulty in towers. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like because you can get like the same as you can get your sardines, you can get your herring herring fillets in tins if you yep. get a good quality one of those. But, yeah, just mackerel. Did you say mackerel? I'm yep, a big, mackerel. I'm a big ma- mackerel or I <laughs> yep. love mackerel. Um, yeah, I feel like that's kippers. the majority of I wonder if kippers, kippers. are. I was I just think thinking of when you said – Maybe they are. When you said, I feel like they're sardines. Google it. <laughs> when, you said, when you said herring, I thought of faulty towers. Well, I'm like, no, hang on, that was kippers, uh-huh. where he like had a kipper down his pants. But you're probably like, I is don't it- know what the hell you're talking about, Jessica. No, I know what faulty towers is. Basil. Do you remember um, when he had I- kippers down I his pants? Su- no, I don't, no, remember, I don't remember heaps that. of the episode. <laughs> they both belong to the family Clipede. So they're similar in many ways. Most kippers are Atlantic herring, while sardines are usually pilchards or sprat. Sprat. Um, so, many, <laughs> so many different fish, both within and outside of the Clipidae family, are sometimes labelled as sardines, including Atlantic herring. So they're slightly different. Um, I, this is why I can't do sardines because sardines to me are like pilchards and well, uh. clearly they're the fucking same fish. Um, <laughs> But I actually thought they were a bit different because we I've fished so long and well not fish because I've fished so much in my life and pilchards have always just been such a bait. Oh, uh, like yeah, yeah. Your oh, brain mate, doesn't associate them bite. with food. Uh, yeah, and the smell, I, I bet. Yeah, oh. yeah. And for someone who like loves seafood like I do and used to literally, I can't remember if I ever said this on a podcast, but when I was young, I used to say to my probably not that young like a teenager, but I'm like, I think I'm going to develop some rare disease where I'm only allowed to eat seafood for the rest of my life. But because it's an illness, <laughs> the government's going to fund it for me. <laughs> great idea that I had. Um, but, but yeah, I cannot, ugh, sardines. I wish I could because there's just such little powerhouses mm, of calcium yep. and minerals and fat and so much good shit there. If you can get into sardines, eat yeah. them, but for me it's bait, unfortunately. Yeah, mm. sardine. I like sardines, but I prefer them fresh, which is really hard to get. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, a lot. That's the problem here too. Is like a lot of the fish that we just listed. A lot of people don't like them. Like mm. just most, a lot of people will do salmon, but I know I see with clients it's it can get really tricky when it comes to fish. A lot of people don't mm. like fishy fish, and I feel like fishy fish is the more oily, stinky it's fish. Where it's at. Yeah. yeah. Um. So yeah, they might be open to like a piece of like just white, kind of yeah. like maybe barramundi if you're lucky, or just some sort of like very very like bland white fish. Um. And that's kind of it. So it it can be a problem with getting it in your diet, which leads us to deficiency signs. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's, that's not right though you're gonna go which leads us to just take a bloody good quality supplement yeah that too <laughs> i'm gonna say signs of deficiency jess's fucking foul feet um, <laughs> um 
Signs of deficiency. I'm going to say, I know you're going to cover the what you were saying with like the feet and cracked skin and stuff, but I honestly, I think for me, a real classic one that I see for people if it's not gluten is those bumps on the back of the arms and on the arms, like those real, I call them essential fatty acid bumps. Like I feel like they can be a real classic that someone's either have got a response to gluten or they're lacking in essential fatty acids or vitamin E. Like I think that's a real classic telltale mm-hmm. and just dry skin in general. Like mm. if you're someone who is whose skin is constantly dry, like and I know that there's so many other reasons why people's mm. skin can be dry, but I do feel like a, a, if, aside from that, an easy one to knock on the head to to try and fix dry skin is boost your fatty acid intake big time and see yeah. see how that goes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the dry skin one's massive, but I'm glad you said it's not the only cause. It can be other drivers, but that was a big one that I saw with my mum that I mentioned. And also she doesn't like fish. Like she is not eating fish mm. at all. Um, so yeah. like there's sort of you can put these pieces together pretty quickly, which is what we would do with clients and even um, Mm. for you guys listening, like if you're not eating these foods and you're seeing some of these symptoms, then, you know, it it kind of starts to allude pretty obviously to what might be missing. But, yeah, the dryness, the cracking. um, I'd also say dry eyes. And, again, there can be other things that can contribute Mm. there. But um, I've definitely seen clients and even people – in my family with really chronic dry eyes. Um, and as soon as they get on top of their fish consumption or, or get fish oils in, that can be a real game changer. Mm. Um, I'd also say this is, this is harder, but yeah, to go back to like DHA and its benefits from a brain health and neurological point of view Mm. that there may be, um, additional pressure as far as like brain just overall, like maybe um, clarity, um, just mood would be another one, um, and potentially even the severity of your overall mental health. Like if you don't have those building blocks for quality brain function, then if you have a predisposition there, then that in turn could be more problematic. Um, and then another one that we talked about a little earlier may be cardiovascular health. So off again, driven by other factors for sure. Um, however, if there is a real deficiency of these omegas and maybe unfortunately other factors as far as maybe skewed fatty acid or just fat intake and other macronutrients um, that are skewed. And yeah, again, it can be other, other factors going on, but I definitely think that a deficiency of your omegas could certainly heighten cholesterol level uh, levels. Oh, I can get yeah, my words definitely. out there. No, but it's yeah, really good. I think too, like, GPs are so quick and I know this is probably a good podcast for us to revisit because I feel like we haven't done it in ages, but the whole cholesterol story, but GPs yep. are so quick to blame, to blame foods in the diet um, yeah. that are potentially causing high cholesterol when, when you actually understand, again, the pathophysiology of cholesterol and why it's high, it to me is just a sign that there's inflammation. Same. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So like, yeah. you know, again, it's like one of the easiest things that, you know, and because we're talking about those cardiovascular, you know, um, pathways, so like, you know, your arteries and veins and all of that and what's actually going on with them at a structural level, if there's damage to those, and just thinking back to what Jess was saying, right, at the start of this podcast with those phospholipids mm. and those beautiful cells, like your arteries and your veins, they have to be almost like these you know, stretchy, elastic things for blood and all of that to pump through and move. They need to be um, not restricted. Mm. And phospholipids play a really big part in the stretch and mobility of your um, arterial and cardiovascular system. Mm. So Mm -hmm. if you're lacking in essential fatty acids and those arteries and veins, I always get them, I know know which one, which, but I, I always just say them interchangeably. But anyway, those those structures are rigid then yeah. th- then the pumping of blood and everything through those actually starts to crack 
Yeah. And, and that's where we get it. That's where the, it signals to the body that we need an in, we need to build up cholesterol because cholesterol goes in and plaques. So cholesterol's mm-hmm. role is actually to go in and repair damage to to your you know your vessel walls. Mm-hmm. So you don't want to be reducing cholesterol because you're taking away the body's innate system to mm-hmm. repair. You want to be looking at why these you know why cholesterol's been upregulated in the first place. And one mm-hmm. of the biggest things for that is what's going on at this phospholipid layer. What mm-hmm. is causing this you know this dry out and this damage? And a lot of the mm-hmm. times you, it can be something as simple as essential fatty acids. So mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and a million other reasons yeah. <laughs> which we're not going to talk about in this podcast. <laughs> but yeah, like I just think yeah, like there's just there's so much in it, and even with what you said were saying before about the nervous system with DHA, like signs that people would notice, like if you're someone who is is anxious or you're someone who's got insomnia, all of these agitated nervous system mm. related mm. conditions. Like I explain DHA to my clients. Like when you think about nerve endings and nerve pulses, and again, I know it's hard to just and I think about this purely from like a a biochemistry point of view, but also like how they actually physically function. But nerve pulses and nerve trans transitions, it's like one neuron talks to another neuron and they kind of connect. Like think about the avatar tails. Think about avatar tails oh, linking I love and talking that to analogy. each other. Right, that's such so, a good one. Yeah, yeah. And just think about them underwater when they connect into their beautiful tree and all of that. Like, yeah, that's what your nervous system has to do. And yeah. Or even before be... they, t- sorry to interrupt, but even I was yeah. thinking those tails, <laughs> like even before they touch, and you see the little sparks flying back, yeah. like they haven't even touched yet. Like yeah. because like the neurons aren't actually touching is that little synapse yeah. space between them. Yeah, but correct. anyway, yeah. Sorry, keep going. <laughs> No, that's exactly right. This is how I explain nerves to my clients. And so for the nerves to communicate and and send those little messages between the synapses, Mm. you don't, and I know it's real, this is a really simplistic way of looking at, you don't want that communication highway to be dry. Because yeah. if it's dry, it's more static and it's kind of like drained of its life force. This mm. is why I bring the avatar tree into it. Whereas <laughs> if you if you get, <laughs> you can't be drained of your life force. But if you if someone has adequate DHA um, in there, it's like something goes all over all of those beautiful neurons and just mm. coats them and gives them a hug. So that fluid and that transition, mm. be- sorry, that transition becomes beautiful and fluid again. So if you're someone whose nervous system is essentially fried, think of yeah. that, that, you know, that those pathways being more like, <laughs> like, you know, like not as, <laughs> and you give someone DHA and it becomes, oh, so pretty and fluid. Yeah. Um, but that's, you know, but that's, so that's, how I explain it to my clients, like if someone says to me, mm. why I'm on such high doses of DHA, I'm like, because your nervous system is fried. Like you're pinging <laughs> constantly. It's like, it's like you like literally have a avatar tree. Someone said avatar fire tree. Avatar tree. <laughs> yeah. Someone has said fire to your avatar tree and we have to build her from the root system up again. Okay. So you need DHA. <laughs> They're just like backing out of the room slowly okay. this nutritionist has lost her mind <laughs> he is a fucking nut job <laughs> oh, that's such a good analogy i love it i oh, love like, it i love it don't leave what about your avatar tree <laughs> chasing them with my hair like this <laughs> Come back. Uh, oh my lord love it oh, well like, anyway, I, the- I wrote down um I feel like we've kind of covered this. Like the last point that I mentioned was other nutraceutical benefits. So I was kind of thinking about besides besides the deficiencies that we've talked about and what they do in the body, it was like are there other things clinically that we use them for um, outside of that? But I feel like like you mentioned that you kind of took the one that I was thinking about earlier. So. Thanks. Soz. <laughs> Which was, I guess I was thinking about the gut, right? Like when I wrote that down as far as the mm-hmm. hex LPS thing, like I was thinking if there's anything else that we use EPAs for that's outside of just like deficiency states or outside of like um, functionality in the body that we've mentioned. But I feel like we might have covered them all. Like, Yeah. There's I've, no other mate. Yeah. Is there any that come no, to mind for you? No, I do feel like though, as, and I know the research always changes and, you know, but 
but you like I just feel like there's so much biochemically that we understand about essential fatty acids so I'm I just I I kind of get a bit shitty when something comes across the news that says taking a fish oil might be bad for your health like that fucking mm. annoys me because it's such a blanket statement I think I genuinely genuinely think that outside of therapeutically dosing EPA and DHA which is what we do when we're trying mm. to you know th- you know treat someone for x y and z taking a good quality fish oil for general health is not a bad idea. That's mm. my personal view. I don't know if you share that view, but sometimes someone will say to me, like, if I could, if you could list three supplements mm. that are just beneficial for everyone's health, fish oil is in my top three. A yeah. really good quality one. Oils ain't oils, guys. Jess and I will rant to the cows come home about not choosing yeah. fucking shit oil. Yeah. But choose a good, <laughs> choose a good one. Um, because I do just think, like, even if you're taking a good quality fish oil, two of them at night before you go to bed, like, I just think there is health benefits to be gained from that because, like you said, a lot of people don't like fish. A lot of people aren't eating fish a couple mm. of times a week. Um, a lot of people, like even when we're talking about the ALAs, like I, I personally am not a big nut and seed eater. Like I like mm. them, but my diet's not rich in those. My diet's richer in fish than it is in yeah. you know, um, ALA rich foods. And we probably should mention that with a lot of the ALA rich foods is where your omega-6 comes in as well and some yeah. of those and as well which we didn't go into omega-6 heaps but just knowing that it is had it plays its role in like the inflammatory cascade and a beneficial role but yeah it's just I think I can't remember where I was going with that but anyway <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, like, like you just, you're definitely yeah. highlighting there the I think which is really important the general benefits of it like I think yeah people need to look at on an individual basis what their dietary Mm. consumption is and I do that with clients as something as you say is like a a general supplement that you potentially should be taking on a daily basis if you feel like you're not getting enough dietary intake and the dietary intake needs to be consistent and for a lot of people it just simply isn't and when you look at the like extensive lists of functions that these essential fatty acids have like the the benefits to being on top of your fish oil consumption or you're making sure your EPA DHA is at a good level there's just there's there's nothing to lose and the other thing about fish oils is they have been studied so extensively and there is really next to no adverse um reasons to not take it like there's no um there's no sort of warnings that it comes with. There's no sort of detrimental um, outcomes. Really the main thing that I ever think of when it comes to fish oils is if I know someone's going in for surgery, surgery. Um, or they've got issues with clotting, um, different sort of disorders that can happen there because it is a blood thinner, that would be something mm-hmm. of con- definitely consideration. But the day-to-day person is not going to have any negatives to taking fish oil. So like if you are someone that has a low intake um, or any of the things we've talked about resonate with mm-hmm. you and you have, I, I understand there's a budget here too, like to be taking something, but you're like, I want to make sure that if I'm going to take something, that it's something's going to help me all round. Like this, this really is, as Chris has said, the supplement to consider, but please do like I, I used to work which I think I've mentioned on the podcast many of times in a health food store when I was doing my studies. And I will never forget on pension day, all of the oldies coming in as waiting outside five minutes before the shop, staring at their watch and like banging on the door if we hadn't opened it yet. But they'd be coming in <laughs> to buy their 1999 tub of 200 fish oils from out the front that would be like the brand of the the health food store or Sonovas or something like that. I don't know if we're going to get into trouble for saying <laughs> shitty names, but basically cheap as, oh, shit. and I'm talking, you open that tub and you smell it and it stinks like rotten fish. That is just so bad for you. That fish oil has oxidized. It's gone off. When you are looking at investing in a fish oil, you need to make sure you spend your money wisely and look at reputable companies and when you open a fish oil it should not smell like fishy like an off fishy smell um so 
yeah, like I think that's another sort of piece when it comes to like the nutraceutical benefits, like actually looking yeah. at what you're spending your money on and making sure you're getting quality. Yeah, exactly. I think um, something I was going to think say too, like with even just if you're taking a fish oil, like if you're someone who has like this is just something so simply that I've seen for people be game changers, not even something I've, they've come to me for. But if you're someone who has high blood pressure, um, fish oil, again, this, and this is probably an interesting one between the ratios of omega-6 to omega-3. So omega-6 mm -hmm. plays a role in, in blood pressure regulation, but so does omega-3. And if you're, if you are predominantly a bit more omega-6 dominant, so maybe you have more exposure to refined, some refined types of, you know, seed oils. Um, if your diet is a little bit more omega-6 dominant, or if your diet actually is just pro-inflammatory full stop, and therefore that is actually putting arterial pressure in there or cardiovascular pressure and you've got high and high blood pressure, like something as simple as fish oil, which just restabilizes mm. that balance between the omega-3 and omega-6 can bring blood pressure down for people. Mm. So without having to go on medication like that is something, I just thought of it then when we're talking about other things beyond like, I know that's a therapeutic benefit, but just a general health benefit because most mm. people as they age end up with blood pressure issues. Like mm. I don't think we will because we're so onto that kind of stuff. I hopefully touch wood, but I think it's something that's really common. Yeah. Um, but, you know, but again, if you're someone who has low blood pressure, just while we're prescribing stuff over a podcast, I always think, shit, who are the people that shouldn't take this? If you have low blood pressure, be careful of taking fish oil because it has a blood pressure lowering effect. Mm -hmm. um, Sorry, I was totally went on another tangent there, but I thought, shit, if people are just going to go out with low <laughs> blood pressure, if you're on, if you're on blood thinners, don't take it. If you've got low blood pressure, be aware that it can lower blood pressure more. <laughs> disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. Disclaimer, disclaimer, disclaimer. <laughs> Literally. Uh, oh, God. You know, the last one um, I'll say, and again, we've, we've talked about this um, a little bit, but I want to talk about it more as like an additional benefit outside of health um, implications is just – back to skin and particularly for mm. I'm going to play to people's vanity like with aging like as as we age our skin naturally isn't as pliable and plump um as it was when we were younger um and I think there's a place there for fish oils again and using them on a daily basis let alone what I would be talking about with clients again with their diet but I know some of even the beauty clinics that I've been to are really up and coming that are putting the pieces together between external treatments and what people are consuming and what they're taking. Like I, I can think of one that I go to locally when I walk in, that their shelves stock quality fish oil. Like it is part yeah. of what they sell in clinic um, and also something that they're talking to clients about while they're having whether it's, I don't know, some form of laser treatment or whatever they're having facials, mm. like it's a conversation. And I think that's something yeah, 100%. Um, just for women and males that are listening, that that's something that they want to also consider. Um, I know I, I'm, I wish I was better <laughs> taking my fish oil just for that reason. I personally love the idea of taking I've got a liquid fish oil in the fridge at the moment I'm just so hopeless with taking it I personally think that I just need to realize I am a capsule person um I've realized and that. the really good liquid ones are amazing you can well I find you if you really want to you can just swig them from the bottle like they literally don't take taste fishy or I'll like add a little bit into my like this is where I'm good if I have some powders or something I can add it to that and mix it all up but I don't know there's something about forgetting it's there and forgetting to take it but when it's the capsules I'm I'm better um yeah but yeah I, that's something even for myself like as far as just just I think of like general again general wellness like mm. maybe a week where my fish consumption isn't where I would have liked it to be it's like this nice insurance um yeah. that I know is taking care of just the general day to day and helping me feel good about my skin and also um even like just general day to day inflammation, like with training and so forth. I I, was I really say, like, like it. Yeah, I was literally gonna say I 
I'm a, I'm a fish oil not a fish oil junkie, but it is actually part of my routine every day. I am with you on the liquid versus the capsules. Like I have so many good intentions when I buy a liquid that I'm going to do it. But psychologically, I think I've just done too many different liquid fish oils over the years mm. and it's just a fuck no for me now. It sits in the fridge. I <laughs> want to do it. I think about doing it. I do it for three days and I go buy capsules again. Um, <laughs> yeah. But... <laughs> And I have this chat with my clients because I've got some diehard clients that have been on like the Arctic decod liver oil or the omega oils because bang for buck and in terms of like how much you get out of a teaspoon mm, of exactly. fish oil versus four capsules, even the really good quality capsules do not match up no, in terms of what yeah. you can put into a liquid. So if you're someone who can do a liquid fish oil, fucking beauty, go for yeah. it, best way to do it. But for the pussies like Jess and I that have just fucked ourselves up taking too many stupid supplements over the years and doing too much damage <laughs> to our psychology of our brain, capsules are the way to go. But um, the training side of it, I I seriously cannot live without fish oils now purely mm. because of all the stuff I've gone through from an injury point of view. But I notice mm. a difference hard out on and off fish oils in terms of recovery from training and, and just pain and stuff like that. Because, you know, we're getting so old now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I definitely rate it for if you're someone who exercises a lot, like Jess yeah. and I do, and exercises and training is a big part of your routine, I can yeah. highly recommend fish oil as part of your routine your training regime yeah recovery absolutely mm. this is just giving me a kick up the butt to go and take i'm going to take my fish oil and i'm going to take my creatine because i was like <laughs> on it for a few weeks and now i've fallen off it i'm going to go mix my fish oil with creatine that's so <laughs> hardcore <Bob. laughs> get it down let's get it down <laughs> oh, dear. oh is there anything more with- energy <laughs> more power <laughs> <laughs> oh dear no i got nothing else to I say think we've, i think we've covered it well um I, yeah if you guys have any questions about this topic just absolutely let us know hopefully we've made yep. it nice and easy to understand that's always what we're about <laughs> Good hope so. i think chris has done really well considering she thought she was absolutely brain fried so I kudos to you remember simple words i couldn't remember simple words before we jumped on remember like <laughs> jesus i just don't know i'm due for my period and i'm tired and i just feel like my brain is failing me and i'm just going to go and have a lot of dha because i feel like if i don't i may not know who's looking at me in the mirror tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> like who is this person <sighs> <laughs> yeah. now before we finish have you got any recos I do. I have um, a show that I've been watching that I think you might have watched, but normally my reco isn't a show, but Mm -hmm. um, it's actually something I've been really enjoying. Um, Sex Education. Oh, I love it. Have you watched? Did you? Okay. I remember you saying you were watching it ages ago, but I didn't know your vibe about it. But I left as usual i'm so late to the party starting the series but i always like to start it once the last season's released so i can just binge the fuck out of it and be done i mm-hmm. hate hanging um but yeah i am just so in love with it like I just, it's good I'm hey telling everyone about it anyone who hasn't watched it i'm like you just need to watch this like it's just <sighs> so i don't even have a word for it but if you haven't watched it it's like heartbreak high old school heartbreak high mixed with modern heartbreak high because there's obviously two of them so anyone who watched heartbreak high two decades ago (laughs) versus like the modern version of it versus like combined with i don't know like it's just it's so fucking glorious to watch Mm, it's great isn't it it's really really good good. jillian anderson in it it's just like the best mate she is she is so good i and i was such a little avid x-files nerd back in the day <laughs> so i actually haven't seen the Gillian anderson resurrection anything like this like she yeah she just i'm back in love with her i think i was in love with her when i was 12 and i'm in love with her again um <laughs> she's like yeah, if, if you haven't you're, watched if you it, turned past hey? like if she's your like if you turned gay hall pass yeah, oh, I've got a few of those. I feel like if I wanted a bit of an like a uh, like a bit of a sex therapist fetish hall pass, she would be it. Um, but I've got heaps of other <laughs> so many hall passes mixed. Just like is that another hall pass? I'm like fuck yeah. <laughs> He's got one. I've got like twelve. <laughs> 
<laughs> so fair enough. Well, that'd be an interesting yeah. topic one day. Um, where our hall passes. Where our hall passes. <laughs> All right, what's your reco? I'm going to do a shameless plug. Um, the cookbook is like limited stocks now, guys. There's not much remaining. And as of, well, I think by the time this podcast goes up, it will be on Christmas sale. So we're putting it on, let me get this right, it's 25% off, which is the biggest sale that we've had on it, and it'll be on throughout just November. So the link will be in the show notes and you can go to the um, socials and find it there. But there is limited remaining, so we're just like going to throw it out with some Christmas love and put a nice big fat sale on it. And if you guys either want a copy for yourself or the reason I'm doing it now, we're doing it now, is just to get it in time if you want it for a present for someone. Chris is putting a hand up. Yes. Yes, Miss Mason. I still don't. I still haven't bought a copy. <laughs> you are a disgrace. I am a fucking disgrace. <laughs> Like I'm, I keep looking at them, I'm like, oh, there's plenty in the clinic because I just access it whenever I want. I'll make I sure want, there's right? one. Is, yeah, there'll be yeah, one for I you mean, put aside. I, Don't I, worry. I would, I would actually, actually be so disappointed in myself if you sold out of them because I know you're not doing a republish, and I would be no. so disappointed if I did not have a copy sitting on my shelf behind me. Of I my no, it should be there. Yeah, I know. no, there won't. There's I not going like- to be. There isn't going to be a reprint. There will be. I definitely want to do another one. Um, and that's what I'd prefer to focus on rather than doing one. And this was always, I don't know if I've said it on a podcast, to, to me it's like something that I've produced that I feel like is, it's like an art. I feel like it about art. Like it's not something that I mm-hmm. want to be reproduced. I want the people that have it to have it and love it and to be part of their collection. But once you have it and once every once it's gone, like you're the people that have it. So, yeah, yeah definitely if you want one, get one, get it as a gift. Chris has, oh, Chris has got one. <laughs> There's one less. <laughs> I'm such a shit of a supportive friend. I'm going to write a little inscription in there. Actually, that would be the other thing. Um, if you're listening and you buy one. And you want it you signed. Want it as a, yeah, if you want it signed or if you want an inscription, because we get people occasionally ask this, when you purchase the book online, there's a note section. If you just write in there what you'd like even if it's just like can Jessica sign it or is it like can Jessica write an inscription with whatever it is that you want written within reason no I'd write anything I don't care I'm I'm literally (laughs) thinking of what I want written in my book right now (laughs) I'll write anything (laughs) just include that too and we'll take care of it um but yeah that's it that's my shameless plug um Guys, we hope you liked the show today. I think we did pretty well considering. I think we did well <laughs> hopefully, considering Hopefully my you're brain. feeling informed. If you're feeling a little like your brain needs some love, then you know what you need to Take do. Take DHA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we'll only have a few shows left now before the end of the year. We'll be taking a break. Um, and we have some cool guests that are lined up that we were just talking about even before um, coming on here. So, yeah, even 2024, we've got some exciting things ahead. But we will chat to you again before the end of the year. Yes. As always, share the show. It means a lot. Leave us a review. I know I say that all the time, but please do because it helps others find us. Uh, And have a fab day. See you later. Have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.